What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's Fuse Network session. That's right, we've got loads of questions over here at Fuse Network. So you're here with me, Ian Kane, and in this session, we'll be chatting with Leon Rossiter. He's the CEO and co-founder of a project called People. People is a payments and rewards platform that helps keep more money flowing in the local economy. It's kind of the solution we need right now, generally. And the platform leverages Fuse Network's Web3 tech to facilitate stablecoin transactions for local businesses and rewards customers with their PPL tokens. So, Leon, how are you doing today, man? You good? Yeah, all good. 20 degrees outside and sunny, so that's nice. And up being up north in uh, England. I was going to say, hang on a minute, you're in England and you're telling me it's 20 degrees and it's sunny. What's happened? Is it, is it all changed? Yeah. Well, this is why, you know, we might touch on it today. Climate change is real. <laughs> yeah, well, some people are quite liking it, I think, at the moment. But yeah, okay. All right, cool. So, uh, yeah, Leon's here. We've got that. So for those of you guys that don't already know, we do these sessions over at Fuse. Maybe this is the first time you've tuned in. Fuse Network is a pretty unique blockchain that aims to bridge the gap between crypto and the real world. The platform has features and tokens to help companies create their own crypto economy. And we've been in the blockchain space for a long time, and we're working tirelessly to upgrade the network and make it fit for purpose as we move forward. So our approach to bringing crypto payments and DeFi to the masses empowers other projects, businesses, organizations, and communities to adopt crypto payments and DeFi. So with that in mind, it's time to welcome today's guest and dive a little bit deeper into people. So I'm really happy to have Leon here today. Uh, People's a project that I've been looking at for quite some time, and uh, it seems like something very cool and something quite different as well. And I think it's a good example of the type of projects that we want to see launching on Fuse. Um, and that's what these sessions are all about. They're about meeting, um, understanding the people that run these brands, these companies, and what their ethos is and what drives them to do this. So enough for me. And uh, let's dig in a little bit, Leon. So mm. I guess we should start with you telling me a little bit about yourself, how you ended up in this madness of a blockchain mm. world. And how that then has kind of progressed into you launching people. Tell me, man. Yeah, so out of uni, about 25, started sort of doing search engine optimization, ran a digital marketing agency, learned a lot about the Google algorithm. And then after that, the Facebook algorithms found that quite a really interesting topic, you know, considering they influence all of our lives. Then worked in a few sort of different tech startups, one of the first property crowdfunding platforms in the UK, another asset marketplace for game assets. So learned a lot about growing, you know, sort of innovative new ideas. Invested in a company called Independent Liverpool that had a massive impact on the local economy here. It was essentially just a blog that was shining a light on independent restaurants. Oh, nice. Um, and also entertainment venues. And, you know, we got to the point where through Facebook and Instagram and email and the discount card that we were running, you know, we were writing a post about Ghetto Golf, actually, pretty cool. Uh, oh, I've heard of that. I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, heard... yeah. It's, it's, it's great. It's around the country now. So it was the first, one of the first to do it in a big old abandoned brewery, oh. actually. Yeah, you can go have cocktails, play some, some some crazy golf with friends, like really successful business. And but before that had opened, we did some photos, we did a blog about it, and they were booked out for the next four months in advance wow. at wow. weekends. So yeah, just really fascinating to see the power that the internet and social media could have when you actually have, you know, an interested audience and then you have businesses on the other end that are independent and doing cool things. If you spend a pound in a local business, about 60 to 65p will stay in the local economy. If you spend that in a chain, it's around 25 to 30p. So, you know, as soon as you just understand that, and which I did a long time ago, you're like, well, hang on. I yeah. live here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I this live. affects me, right? It's not just yeah. like some abstract thing. Yeah, right? like I live in this community. So why wouldn't I want all of the money to be staying here so I can have better public transport or better community organizations, better football, you know, grassroots football stadiums or whatever it is, you know, and that sort of inspired me to, to think about the problem more and more. And then, yeah, five, six years ago, got in touch with actually Mark Morgan, CEO of Fuse to say, look, we have all of this stuff in Liverpool. Can we please use the colored coins technology, which ah. was the first, which was the first protocol to use the bitcoin blockchain to move assets other than money so they were moving 
wine and other uh, other aspects. Vitalik Buterin was part of that team as well in the early days. You know, I think Vitalik quicker than most on that project realized that Bitcoin was never going to be suitable. And <laughs> he came up with a pretty cool idea called Ethereum. It's um, pretty cool. It's a pretty good idea. Not many people have heard of it, right? Like, it's just one of those little things that happens. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I had, I've, I've heard of it, definitely. I think other people have heard <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, uh, so yeah, it's like, I got in touch with them and say, look, can we take the coloured coins technology? Because I think I can create a local currency in Liverpool. We've got everything we need. Mm -hmm. As Vitalik established, it wasn't ready for that sort of use case. And, uh, get, you know, and even that was a couple of years later, then it still wasn't ready. But what had happened was Mark and a few others who'd been on the project had realized its potential and, and started a company called Kalu. In the end, they ended up raising $45 million. Uh, I was their first international hire, brought the technology to Liverpool. And, you know, we ran the largest local digital currencies in history yeah. to date across Liverpool, London, Tel Aviv, and another territory in Israel, Haifa. Learned a hell of a lot about the product market fit and whether it was right and it wasn't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> At least you found out early, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, we, yeah, we did actually. Yeah. So, um, learned a hell of a lot about, you know, how you can actually get mobile apps in people's hands. Like people do care about this stuff. Yeah. You know, it means something to people to support your local community. And Fuse ended up spinning out of, of the Kalu company. And then in 2018 started to sort of form the vision of, of what people is and what it could become. All right. So the relationship runs quite deep then between Fuse and yourself. You've been into other projects in the past that have been associated with Mark as well as mm -hmm. Fuse. That's really cool. So that relationship's been there for a while. So I'm not going to ask you why Fuse. I think it's actually, yes, I am. Why, <laughs> did, you, why did you choose to go with Fuse Network as a blockchain for this particular project, Leon? Yeah, well, part of, I mean, part of that is obviously the relationship that we had, um, you know, mm -hmm. I had with Mark. And the first time I met Mark back when it was Coloured Coins and also Dudu, the other co-founder of Kalu, mm. this it was never about money. It was about vision. It was about understanding things were a little bit broken. Yeah. The rise of Amazon, Uber, Deliveroo, all these platforms the last 10, 15 years, Facebook, Google, to some extent. Economies in high streets, certainly in the UK, are being, are being left behind. Decimated, um, right? Well, see, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're closed. You see the, yeah, like when I go back to the UK, I'm constantly, it's just charity shops and birthday card shops <laughs> in the high street now, which is fine, but yeah. it's changed. In the, in the lower income communities, it's betting shops, which is just, you know. Yeah, and fried chicken, fried chicken and betting. <laughs> Gamble your money and eat crappy food, right? Like yeah, it's yeah. terrific. I'm glad we're on the same page with these things, Leon. Like it's not just me that's seeing these things. Well, I think a lot of people see that, but it's, you know, what do you do about it? At the end of the day, you're, you're trying to get by yourself. Um, you know, these are problems that maybe aren't yours and, you know, who's, yeah. who knows whose problems they are, government, but then it's like regulation of technology. And whereas, yeah. you know, the vision of blockchain and Web3, you know, let's have a go at something doing something different. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, yeah, well, we've kind of organically come to the point where I need to kind of ask you the question. So what is it that people actually does? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that you guys do? And well, I want to, I want to take a minute here just to, um, let's try and explain this so that everybody could understand mm. it. Like, I know that's not easy sometimes in this space, but mm. give, it, give it a shot, man. Like I want my granny to understand what people. I'll give it a go. So yeah, People is a mobile app based payments and rewards platform for businesses and communities to use to connect and transact with the ultimate aim of keeping more money in local economies. So you've got independents and grassroots organizations get charged more by the likes of Visa, Uber Eats, Deliveroo than any of their peers who are national chains. Okay. Uber, another example, Uber takes a really high percentage of taxi fares from people that live and work in the same city. And we just think, we want to change that essentially. I mean, that's the simplest way I could say it. Another sort of top level way to look at it maybe is if I'm an alien visiting earth and I look at what's happening between people that live and work in the same city and they go, oh, these, these humans, they've got it down. Like that guy over there is ordering a taxi through a smartphone. He's looking at a computer. He taps a few buttons, the taxi arrives and it, it takes him to the destination. These humans, they're pretty advanced, right? Nailed it, right? Nailed it. Well, Absolutely. Then he, nailed then it. he like looks at and go and he gets digs a bit deep and he's like, Oh, 
Uber's mm. taking 20% of that and taking it to some company in San Francisco. And they're like, what? What? Why? <laughs> How? Why? How? But it's all to do with, a lot of it's to do with the with the birth of like the internet generation. People are so fast. They want everything so quickly. Mm. And I think the word convenience is the one yes. that really hits it, right? If you can just exactly. go on your phone. Exactly. Willing, and it's quite scary what people are willing to give up for convenience, I think. And at the beginning of the chat, you were talking about Google advertising, Facebook advertising. Mm. I wanted to ask, because you said that was... And then you pause and you said it was interesting. And I was going to add in a little mm. bit scary, perhaps. I've come off Facebook uh, nine and a half years ago now because I learned how the, how the algorithm works. And I thought this isn't going to end well. <laughs> no. yeah. <laughs> and then like Cambridge Analytica and, and, yeah. and all of those bits and pieces like the Social Dilemma movie on Netflix, you know, so scary, yeah. scary stuff like the market is, is, is driving almost what we want, even if we might not necessarily want it <laughs> which is Pretty much you don't even know what you're kind of you're just being told aren't you really you're just well, yeah it's it we're kind of been a bit brainwashed into believing that we need things that we genuinely don't like these days when i'm looking through like insta for example mm. it makes me feel sick i'm just like what is this like, i don't care what you're doing like i don't care so yeah. it's really kind of strange but let's get back to people because you did mm. it that was a really good uh explanation there that you gave but let's try break it not break it down further Let's say for it, let's put ourselves into a real world example here. Let's yep. pretend that, for example, I want to start a small business. I'm, mm -hmm. I've started a new takeaway in the in the Birmingham area of the United yep. Kingdom. And um, I'm up against every other takeaway out there, plus all the chains that you mentioned mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. What's the process here? Like, because my customers have to use, how does it work for the customers? And yeah, yeah. let's talk about that a little bit. Like. So, yeah, from a customer's perspective. So we've got a couple of partners in food delivery, Chocal and Veggie. So veggies really focused on the vegetarian and vegan community, just started doing their uh, first orders in the last month. Show call have been operating since before the pandemic, done around, I think it's 350,000 orders across Manchester and Liverpool. Wow, so nice. They're taking our payments and rewards technology uh, to essentially reward the customer every time they spend 5% of their order in people tokens. Okay. And now, you know, why would you do that? Well, ultimately the delivery platforms and the larger ones which the bbc did research on consumers are paying on average 24 percent more for every food delivery they do on the big on delivery uber eats and just eat 24 percent oh, more than, go, than going direct to the restaurant and getting them to deliver it themselves wow a quarter jeez yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. And I bet most people don't know that, Leon, right? I bet a lot well, of people don't. And that's why the BBC did a big article and a big research study and, and, you know, released that information. But you exactly hit the nail on the head where you said it's convenient. The customer experience is excellent. Yeah. So that's why you might look at that. But then you might look at like phoning the restaurant, the local Indian takeaway, and mm. then not knowing where it is and, and paying cash or... Uh, you know, and we're, you know, we're just not living like that. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Like it can be a little bit more laborious, right? Like a little bit yeah. more, a few more steps, extra yeah, steps. Yeah, exactly. So what we want to do is bring that customer experience, that excellent mobile base, mobile app based customer experience to projects uh, and services that are locally focused, that are better for restaurants, that are better for riders and link them all up across a suite of apps. And mm -hmm. that's what we've made some really, really interesting inroads into in the past sort of six months. It's really fascinating what you can do when we've got some technology like Fuse that's all open source and we've got passionate members of different communities, whether that be vegan, whether it be uh, landlords and letting agents, which we've got a product that's launched in September around, whether it's media organizations that are looking for ways to uh, sort of monetize their audience, but also looking for ways for them to get more attention on their localized folk products and right. services. So um, that's really just the start is those three little, you know, verticals that we're talking about, because what you can do with smart contracts in terms of moving around money for less than a cent per transaction, and actually automating affiliate revenue models and 
essentially reducing sales and marketing costs for local communities. It's some, some interesting yeah, stuff. You know, right? Like, um, that's a surprising number that you've put out there, Liam, like that 25% number. That, and I, like you said, like, 24, I would say, 24, check the 24, article. 24. <laughs> yeah, that convenience is worth a 24% premium. That, that, that's, exactly. That's so that's I bad. think uh, Jeff, Jeff Bezos said, your margin is my opportunity, which is a bit of a sad statement in some ways, but certainly when it comes to the food delivery apps that already have some some issues around sort of ethics and governance and structures that's you know how are the restaurants the riders benefiting from these systems yeah whilst there's already concerns of that and like deliveries ipo was the worst in history uh on the london stock exchange like when you factor that all in like yeah there's there's room for for something different there yeah well those systems let's if we just think about it if we go back maybe not even what a decade those mm -hmm. systems were mostly not around the exactly. idea of getting a cab through yeah. your phone in that i remember addison lee came around and that was kind of there but yeah. then it, it's not that old like we're so and no, no, exactly. it can change again right quite quickly exactly and the the, uh, the founder of brussels dow is also connected to uh, vegan brussels who are going to be adopting our technology hopefully in the next couple of months nice. you know he, he said it perfectly thanks very much delivery uber eats just eat you spent billions of dollars <laughs> on educating them on educating the market that food delivery is cool and it works thank you very much we will take that consumer behavior change and we'll do something positive with it. Oh, I like that, man. I like that. That's like taking the Web2 lesson and being like, cheers, guys, you can stop now. Like, hold my drink. Yeah. We'll, on, right? we'll take it from here, guys. <laughs> we'll take it from here, guys. <laughs> but I think there's a good point there as well, Leon, that people sometimes, when I do these interviews, a lot of the time people are quite mm. negative about Web2 stuff, but mm. they did nail it, man. Like, let's be real. Yeah, yeah. The convenience of it worked. They did nail yeah. it. So, a big Amazing. part and that's why i'm asking about like how it actually works in the wild so you said that you're using the ppl tokens to actually purchase the, the vegetables for example is that how it works so i need so, to they, so all of the customers in the people network will be using stable coins to, to essentially right. to purchase these goods and services okay um, got it. and then being rewarded in people tokens which will have a fixed price uh, for at least the next next four years Ooh, okay, let's talk about that a little bit then. So you're giving mm. rewards. So I order some food, I get my food, mm -hmm. I should hope, and then I also am topping up with some kind of reward system here based on your token. Talk, talk you, to you us spent, about that. Yeah, you spent £100 because you've got mm -hmm. five mates over on food delivery. <laughs> you're I'm not that get... generous, Leo. <laughs> So five pounds of that is going to be converted into the people token and sent back to you immediately for you to then transact again within that app or another app with inside the people network. Nice. And the business is then because if they take a, so they're losing quite a large chunk when they take these payments through these centralized providers, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got a hundred takeaways, but one website, they're taking a little cut. How does the seller benefit here? Are the fees less? Like how does that work for the, for the seller? Is it cheaper for, the, for them? For the restaurant, well, that would be, you yeah. know, the par the partners that we're working with, they have their own, you know, percentage take. Um, but essentially what it's working out for the restaurant is cheaper still than the large delivery platforms for the, yeah. for the independents. So it's nice. cheaper still, but also that 5% that's going back to the customer is obviously incentivizing repeat purchase. And uh, we're a platform that involves these restaurants, you know, through ownership of the network and, and all these other bits and bobs. So the restaurants right. are joining because yes, it's still cheaper for them, but also they're joining something that can generate more orders and also be more sustainable in the future. Well, you're creating that loop as well, right? Like you're rewarding mm -hmm. the customer, they're more likely to come back and keep continuing to use the platform. It makes a lot of sense in that sense. So yeah. But um, I also read on the website that you're doing, because um, you said then that the token is going to be a fixed value, which in crypto mm -hmm. world is like, hold on. Yeah. Now, how are you doing that one so and then yeah. that you're also locking capital get you're limiting capital gains i read also right. as well yeah, yeah. So talk, talk to us about those two things locking the token price mm -hmm. i think i know why you're doing that but tell yeah. people why and then this limiting of capital gains talk to me about yeah, that so one. we had some experience of launching a currency um within the actual as i mentioned before with Kalu, we ran the largest local digital currencies in history um local currencies that is and probably the lo largest local currencies ever created, not just digitally. When we experimented tying a sort of new rewards aspect to it, 
that was called the CLN that had some fluctuation in it. And at the time, Ethereum sort of nosedived and that affected the price within the communities. I don't want to be rewarded five pounds in people tokens for buying the food. And three weeks later, that is worth a pound. I will have immediately lost faith in anything this company has ever said, because yeah. our mission is to build something sustainable and that benefits communities, that's open source, that brings people together, because this is a big challenge, what we're talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, unless, yeah. unless we build trust and we build a giant network, we're not going to be ready to have I mean, you know, the, the market making contracts or the other aspects that we'll need to, to actually allow this to have its own sort of liquidity pools and have its own price. We want the yeah. market to set the price. You know, crypto uh, and Web3 are all about, you know, going there and then and then everybody's looking at the token price every day. Well, who's building the company? Who's building the resilience? So right, man. So it's probably right. it's probably a good reason why uh, companies build themselves and then they uh, you know, very carefully plan for an IPO and then go on the public markets because they're ready for it to just discount a hundred years of financial and business history. It's like, <laughs> it's a bit know, crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like, okay, yeah, blockchain's great. I'm all in. But at the same time, we have been doing a lot of business stuff for a long time and capitalism has mm. been on the whole pretty good to a point. And the way that we've built, you know, the stock market and things, it's not just idiots like <laughs> I, know, I know i know it's like I, I actually read an article today about how a lot of blockchain projects seem to create the problem that they want to solve you know <laughs> the, no, the normal process is there's a problem and you solve it but in crypto it seems like they make the problem and then they're like hey, hey we've got the solution for you but this wasn't an issue a minute ago so yeah i, I get it man like I yeah totally so so we want to build something that's really valuable and then let the market decide what it's worth but also at that moment ensure that we're protecting the communities and the consumers and the businesses that are within it in in a way that makes sense and i'm sure in four or five years through regulation through experiences of market making contracts and blah 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 i'm sure we can achieve that it's going to change a lot over the next i think there's an argument to say that this industry has been kind of a little bit childish over the last sort of mm. four, five years. I think we all got a little bit distracted with the idea of yield farming and free yep. money and, yep. and these aspects. And I actually don't find them that interesting, if I'm honest. I mean, it's great. Yeah, Nobody wants to turn away free money, but mm -hmm. it was never going to last forever, right? And I think cool. we're at a really cool time where it's going to be about who's building the next generation of products and services that people actually find useful. Because exactly. <laughs> with like a lot of people have a use for a dex right let's be real but a lot of people don't have a use for a dex i mean and... how hilarious is it that we're even saying this out loud this is where we've got to in sort of uh yeah. Yeah. Web three, like we're actually like saying oh no we're like we need products and services we need people... products and services that people <laughs> yeah you've got to change it, but... people can actually use <laughs> exactly and it seems like uh, and this is why i always think that when blockchain was kind of conceived and people were talking about it they came from an angle of complete they wanted to change everything they like they had a wheel it definitely rolled but they just wanted to reinvent it anyway yeah, yeah. And, they, and it's i just think we got a little bit distracted with all these things and that now it's the time for projects like people to actually make a real solid impact and as much as like all the negative chatter about stable coins over the last few weeks i think it's actually helped because people actually now know what they are because they've seen this negativity. Yeah, yeah. So they've read an article. So we're going through the motions, I would say, more than... Absolutely. Yeah. And, all, and all the hacks and all that, it only makes everything yeah. more stronger and resilient if you can take a longer term mm -hmm. view. Exactly. That's it, I think, Lee, on the longer term view there as well. All right, cool, man. So in a nutshell, this is a this is a platform. So local economy. So at the beginning... Well, the second question, because I didn't quite get to the second yeah, question. Yeah, go on, man. Go for it, of course. Uh, in regards to limiting capital gains. Yes, yes. Yeah, so I think the limiting capital gains part almost came at the same time in 2017, 2018, um, almost at the network's inception. Like, why are we? Why would we create this sort of, you know, local network of different products and services and apps? And, you know, part of it was, uh, which I think it says on our website, like during the pandemic, the world's 10 richest men were worth 700 billion. Yeah. 
and after it they were worth collectively 1.5 trillion and like we all got poorer essentially <laughs> and everyone uh, just kind of took it right like and, and then all of the the toppers side got richer like that is just insane and you know learning about like i mentioned before facebook and google and all that and how much sort of money i think peter Thiel put half a million dollar investment into facebook and got over a billion out and yep. then used that money to take down gorka which was a news organization so yep. individuals having billions of dollars douglas rushkov who's one of our strategic adv uh, advisors and has, has helped us along the way in the last few years he runs a podcast called team human he's always talking about how the billionaires are creating bunkers in arkansas and new zealand yep. to escape the problems that they're that they're creating <laughs> it's horrible you know so how and how much money do you need to be happy and i think what the pandemic showed a lot of people is what people need is community they need their family they need their health they need connection you know that's what's going to make us rich <laughs> no, not, there's no you're right man you're right not like 100 million pounds so what what we've said is we're going to have 100 co-founders of the people network i'm one of them so i'll have as much as another 100 people all of the people that are running the apps and services that i've described the new ones that will join i think we're up to around 20 now at the minute we will get a, a two thousandth of the people network which is 0.05 percent if we had two thousandth of ethereum that would be worth in today's money about 95 million dollars so our idea is that we would all be limited to five million pounds um, okay. and anything over and above that by smart contracts would have to be redistributed and reinvested back into the local community from whence we came. Wow. And we think that if all the value of these billion dollar tech companies or even billion multi-billion dollar blockchain companies, if all the value created there wasn't ending up with the founders or the early investors and was actually rewarding investors you know so our early investors we want to give them 100x because we think that's fair they're taking a big risk yep. later investors it might be 50x might be 20x you know investors are taking a risk they need to be rewarded we accept that but the egregious sort of capital gains aspect to it of, of founders and early investors and you know 15,000 percent returns whatever you know, what's that really doing for us when we're facing some really big challenges around inequality, climate change, uh, the planet, you know, access to opportunity, distribution of opportunity. Yep. So, yeah, we, we want to limit it. Um, yeah, money doesn't help with those things, does it, right? Well, exactly. So, and if we had more successful local communities, if we had more community hubs, more local grassroots sports organizations, uh, more independent businesses, more opportunity, you know, more creativity, more art, all these things, then, you know, would we have less crime? Would we have, would we have even more wealth society? I think Naval Ravikant in uh, one of the podcasts with Joe Rogan said like, yeah, yeah. We, we've got enough in the world that we can all have, you know, loads of wealth. And it's like, it's abundance. Like we live in an infinite universe. Like, yeah. And he's a pretty smart investor who thinks that and joe rogan was like what we can all be rich we can all just have loads of stuff and he's like yeah of course like <laughs> someone's been keeping a secret from joe right he didn't know <laughs> yeah I'm sure, I'm sure joe's doing all right for himself yeah. but um, no they're really good points leon like it's extremely and i think as well just listening to what you're saying about limiting capital gains and some people might see that as being like oh you're limiting my potential to earn mm -hmm. but actually i see it as a very clever way for you to attract the right type of person to your project absolutely, you know? absolutely. Yeah. what it, what are you interested in do you care about your community do you think that this can be a more sustainable model for our communities and local economies because we all live and work and play somewhere yeah and um, so why wouldn't and yeah okay when you're really rich you maybe move to somewhere that's gated and protected like in south africa or whatever <laughs> uh but you know if there was less crime and more wealth in the communities around you you would feel freer and happier to go and visit and experience your local community in a different way absolutely man bottom line i think you know when you've uh you you look around the uk for example we're both familiar with the united kingdom mm -hmm. as a country you do see a lot of depressed areas yeah. that have no money yeah. and there is this kind of facade that is wrapped around the united kingdom that everybody in britain is doing well and the streets mm. are paved with gold and yeah it's just not the truth it's just no. not the truth like you're in liverpool right so you know yeah, about yeah. oxteth and places like this where yeah, it's yeah. you've got thousands of people living on the minimum wage mm -hmm. trying desperately to escalate themselves out of something but 
it breeds exactly. crime because you look across the road and you see the guy with the brand new eighty thousand pound Range Rover, and you yeah. these fe these feelings are evoked, right? And it, it's not healthy Absolutely. for us as humans, I don't think. Well, exactly. And that's what we like to say with the people rewards aspects. You know, there's all these apps like Roundup um, mm -hmm. or like you can get download the Cost of Coffee app and do some settings and round up when you uh, buy a Cost of Coffee to buy shares in Cost of Coffee. Yeah. The people that live in the communities are like you just mentioned, Toxteth, Bootle, other deprived areas in London. They don't have 50 or 60p to round up to get shares. So what mm -hmm. we're saying is when you buy a coffee in the people network, you'll get 5%, you know, 2%, 10% back. You're now part of an ecosystem and you, you, you know, you do own part of the economy, which is built into the model essentially. So, yeah. you know, that's another thing we're excited about is like, yeah, you know, in the future governance, people having a say, if there was money being reinvested in communities, those people that have transacted in it should have a say into Absolutely. where that money gets invested. You know, there's all sorts of things that can come, but it's, you know, super early days. Yeah, we're still early and I think it's quite important to put that out there as well. And the yeah. way that we we know this and I think it, we're still somewhere away. But one of the most important things I see here is some support from from government as well. Yeah. That, that yeah, they yeah. have to embrace these ideas and not try mm. to what's kind of keep hold of their traditionalistic ideas that don't really work all so well. And I know that people got some funding from the UK government. Is that correct, Leon? That's you guys right, yeah, yeah. Tell Should us about this, man, because that shows some... I think shows some love from the UK government towards what you guys are yeah, trying absolutely. to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority, um, which is a net network of sort of six councils, uh, part of the devolution deal from central government, they invested just over nine hundred thousand dollars into the People Network, which included money into us, money into restaurants, money into a bike cooperative in Liverpool, to essentially help us kickstart and and look at the problem as described by the BBC, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> So you've got like a case study and then like a reason and it's like, right, okay, guys, this is what you can do kind of thing. Yeah, but and the, yeah, and the investment was made during the pandemic when food delivery was a lifeline for the independent restaurants, but they were taking eight weeks to get onto Uber Eats or Deliveroo. And, okay. um, you know, there was there was obviously the high fees alongside with that. And, you know, we didn't know whether we'd be in and out of pandemic uh, and lockdowns for like a number of years to come. So... The combined authority was interested in supporting restaurants you know through that period it's how we sort of kick-started the network and then we've managed to build a lot of other things around it to again support that in liverpool and you know expand that out into other cities in europe and the uk that's really cool man so i guess it's time to talk about what the future plans are for people like where mm. you're at right now you've got this new website everything's looking kind mm. of swish and sexy like what's happening over the next kind of six to 12 months with people what are your plans right now what yeah so over the next six to 12 months we're hoping to be live in at least sort of three cities across europe and the uk if not four or five with a with a fair headwind and move into at least another two or three verticals because of what we've built and the nature of the, our technology, uh, the way that apps interconnect. Um, we can sort of very easily move into different verticals, whether that's community sports apps, whether that's re-commerce, you know, looking at that circular economy aspect, whether it's payments and rewards for sporting teams. There's there's a there's a whole range of products, but it's also really about expanding what we've built so far, improving that model across many other cities, and we'll be doing a fundraising round that should close at the end of at the start of next year. So yeah, that's it really is just keep building, showing the numbers of what we've done here and the numbers that we'll do hopefully across in Brussels, you know, in the next sort of three months. Just start growing the presence of the brand and really what we've done through you know the work so far in terms of getting the story which we've been quite quiet but quite considered in what we put out there is we want to attract the right people and the right projects you know so that we can build this in a really healthy sustainable way and get people you know the entrepreneurs and organizations that we've been having come into us since we've done you know relaunched the website about six weeks ago just been super fascinating and interesting based all over the world from south america you know north africa australia europe brussels you know and the projects and the people that are approaching us it's just really exciting to see the potential of what you know what we can do and where we can go and how we can go there nice do you see a lot of we're talking global markets here so mm. i'm just I'm curious if you see a difference in kind of attitude towards these things in different countries. Like we know that in Africa, for mm. example, 
expecting massive rush towards DeFi. They jumped mm-hmm. over banking entirely. Is yeah. it a different ball game in certain countries, or is it all kind of everybody wants the same thing? Maybe yeah. just with a slight difference. Like, I how think the it... organ- yeah, like the types of organisations and entrepreneurs that are coming to us. And, uh, you know, we've got um, blogs on our website about rewriting local economics. We've got blogs about limiting and redistributing capital gains. The ones that are coming to us get it. You know, they see the vision. Yeah. They, yeah. they care about their local community. They care about their city. They care about their town. They care about their region. They Most of them have been involved in one project to another that in some way is like similar or. And it's those kind of people that are approaching us at this stage. And, and that's who we want to speak to um, because they can see a different, you know, v- vision for the, for the world, I guess, and for, for the local communities that we all live in. It's got to so, be those people, right? It's got to be people yeah. like you and I that are sitting here kind of nodding and agreeing with each other because we, we feel the same deep mm. down. We've had these feelings for a long time. We know yeah, something exactly. Wrong. Yeah, exactly. Like Travis Kalanick, the ex-CEO of Uber, if he saw our PR four weeks ago, you know, he's not going to be in touch. <laughs> He'll be like, hang on, what's going on? <laughs> well, you guys are trying to shake things up, right? And I think it's yeah. an interesting time again, because local... I, 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 here's a question for you, Leon. I think is mm. um, for the users, for the end users, for people out there in the world who are just blindly yeah. shopping on Amazon and mm. pumping their money into Tesco. Like, I mean, I keep saying brand, nothing against any specific brand here. We're just talking yeah. freely. But... What would you say to people? And what do you say to people that kind of say to you, but it's easier to do it on Amazon? Like, how do you, how do you combat that? What do you say to these people? <laughs> so I, I would just, first of all, I agree with them. <laughs> <laughs> for now, right? For now. Yeah, yeah, for now, I like 100% agree with them. And mm-hmm. I say, yeah, like 100% it is. And, you know, I have long conversations with friends or people in the business, like, it's just so convenient. But there is that like hint of guilt in the people that really understand some of the yeah. some of the not so great things about it. That it's like, yeah, but it's just so easy. Like you can write it. Most people are happy to write it all off because it's mm-hmm. easy. So we know. So yeah. we've kind of concluded that that's who we're. That's our audience, right? Yeah, yeah. And and what we want to do is just over time bring them products and services that are just as easy, but also work in a different economic model and something that can be better in the long term. But, you know, even Amazon themselves are actually interested in last mile zero carbon logistics. It, we're not anti everything that's come before. What we're about is layering payments and rewards on to different products and services that ultimately improve, you know, local communities and people's lives. And yeah. at the end of the day, you know, some of the stuff we're looking at in re-commerce, which we never really thought we'd involve big brands in before because we think, you know, we need a more circular economy. Yeah. But some of the conversations we're having with retailers about what we're going to bring to market early next year is like really exciting to actually involve them in how can they actually make money in the circular economy and smart contracts and NFTs are an interesting way that things can, I can't say too much, but yeah, it's it, like interesting things can really be done once you have like a different vision basically for, for how we use the internet. And that's what we're all here to do in the Web3 space, right? It's like, how could things be just, probably much better for more people yeah that's a good way of putting it better for more people not better for the small percent that are benefiting from understanding these things and yeah absolutely the internet was intended to give us all more information more freedom more connectivity but it seems to have done the opposite in fact yeah so i think 50 or 55 percent of the bitcoin wealth is in 2.1 percent of the wallets so it's twice as good as the current system is twice as good enough to get out some of the challenges we face you know maybe not <laughs> no it's uh i mean the bottom line here is leon that it's a very tricky tricky thing not tricky um complicated topic that mm. we're talking about because there's a lot of blockers mm. and a lot of legacy in our way right like mm. that's what we are but that's blockchain all over i think and that yeah if you look at what it came to solve it really came and really shook the boat like we're not right. just in there and poking it we're like literally let's just change the whole thing and as we said earlier, I think we did get a little bit distracted with those things. And it's a good time to now bring it back and be like, how can this, and you said it rightly at the beginning, how can these services and products benefit people every day? Yeah. You know, yeah. not just the select few that understand. Exactly. But yeah, I think the reason I ask you the question about what do you say to people is because I find myself having these conversations regularly mm. about, you know, people are saying, oh, I'm ordering my stuff from whatever site, you know, and, oh, yeah. and it arrives the next day and it's fabulous. And I'm like, mm. 
Yeah, but it comes in like six cardboard boxes and the <laughs> whole like ecological trail of how you got your yep. pint of milk is huge. Like it's, mm -hmm. I just don't know whether, I mean, I'm going to be a bit wild and I just don't know whether people, do you think they're going to care enough, Leon? Like, how are we going to get them to care, man? Like, that's a random question, but. Yeah, yeah. How are we going to get them to care? Well, the success we had with Kalu showed that people cared, but they care if it's convenient. Aha, right. Okay, that yeah. makes sense, right? No, that's not true. That's not true. They care and they will try anything because they do care about their local economy. They do care about their community. They do care about the people around them. But that and that care gets them through the door. But what gets them to stay is the customer experience. Got it. And so we have to bring shit hot customer experience yep. to all of the products and services that traditionally may have been underfunded or yes. traditionally may have had to have massive venture capital to bring these products and services to market. But like we said before, the, the food delivery companies and Uber and the taxi companies, they've all done a great job in changing our behavior. So now yeah. if we see something where they can start with the fact that they care, but then they get an experience just as good as them, you know. They're going to change the way they think as well, I believe. I mean, if you look at yeah. the idea of NFT technology as a marketing vessel, for example, mm -hmm. a way to directly interact with customers, a way to reward customers, a way for even... I was talking to a musician the other day and he said, wouldn't it be amazing if you go return to a city to do a gig and you yep. can instantly just drop an NFT into the wallet of everybody that came along to your previous gig. Absolutely, yeah. But yeah. These things are no brainers, right? And I think, the, I feel like it's going to happen a bit sooner than potentially we thought. And that, I wanted to ask you a question about what you think about stablecoin payments generally. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's, we're getting there. Like maybe I'm getting yeah, a bit yeah. excited, but what, what do you think, man? Do you, do you think we'll yeah, be paying for groceries with, with stables soon? Well, absolutely through uh, through Veggie. Literally, yeah. you know, last week I did it. Nice. The the attitude from the Bank of England towards stable coins uh, and the UK, you know, especially after Brexit and running our own financial rules, is really really favourable and really yeah. positive. I see that they're going to yeah. be they're going to be cautious, and it's not going to be overnight, and they're not going to let you run wild. <laughs> but we're part we're part of the FCA's regulatory sandbox environment. Nice. So we're, you know, we've, we've been talking to them for quite a while and it's exciting times. It's exciting times because yeah. we, we need to change and we need to move forward and we can't have the monopolies on payments and banking. And that's why the open banking APIs that yeah. was regulated into existence a few years ago have now been so successful with companies like Plaid jumping on the back of it and others. So, you know, the future is really bright for how and, and, you know, how we move money around and what that can mean for people and for businesses, because, you know, there's a lot of legacy stuff that can 100% be improved. So it's really exciting times when it comes to stable coins and, and what can be done through smart contracts. But, you know, I would say this, like what we've learned is regulation is maybe not a bad thing. You know, I had friends that lost thousands in the stable coin yeah, man. Flash of uh, terror. 85 not a bad thing. It's not a it's bad thing. 85 pages of banking licenses and people would go well, yeah our crypto people might say but why like da, 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 blockchain da, da. okay well my friend just lost ten thousand pounds and that was a lot of money to him it's you a, know it is it, it's, it's crazy leon like i think people i'm with you man like i don't understand people who who are desperate to have complete anonymity and they they hate the idea of kyc and I just keep saying, like, come on, guys, how long did you think it would be like this for? Like, come on, be yeah. realistic. If you want this to be mainstream, we have to act mainstream, not like yeah. we're pirates yeah. hiding in the caverns, you know, doing dodgy business. That's not what we're here for. Like, I just, yeah, I completely agree with you, man. Like, I'm for regulation. I mean, look, like we said, the stablecoin thing, it's going to mm -hmm. help. It's going to clean things up. It's going to change things. It's going to it's going to make a difference, basically. All right, Liam, I think we are getting towards the end of our chat. And I just want to thank you, number one, because you've done a great job explaining everything about people. And um, yeah, I'm kind of like hyped up as well. Like I'm going to keep Good. Up. Yeah, no, I enjoy chatting to you. It's nice to, nice to go through it all. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting project, I think. And it's so nice to talk about something when we're not just going to talk about what's your TVL? How many, uh, <laughs> how much volume have you got? You know what I mean? Like that's what... Yeah. Yeah. I do that a lot, man. I do that a lot. And it's great. And it's cool. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. But there's another side to this industry that I'm perhaps more interested in. And it's the side that you guys are into. So with that, I would ask, is there anywhere where listeners now 
they want to mm-hmm. find out more. They want to they want to speak to someone there. They they, they want to they want to get involved. What can they do, Leon? Where can they go? Absolutely. So they can go to our website. It's about people.com and that's P W E P L and find out more about us there. I think you can join our mailing list. If you click on contact us, you can probably drop us an email. Um, and if you just want to follow us on Twitter, it's at it's about people. And yeah, you can find us there. The links on the website. And get in touch if you think, you know, we've said anything interesting or, you know, we've just done a recent NFT uh, logo project, which has been really successful. So we're not going to own our logo. I saw that. I saw <laughs> yeah. that. Kind of cool. yeah. yeah, tell me about that. How has that been going? Like, have you got a new yeah, logo? Yeah, we've, we've had about 250 people from all over wow. the world sign up to it so far. And, and I think we've had about 80 or 90 so far actually go away and do the actual logo and send it nice. to us. It was really, really cool. And... Yeah, we're going to turn that into an NFT. And essentially, our logo is going to be a red dotted line. And then whoever signed it, the word people and designed it in every which way they like, that is essentially going to be our logo when there's enough room for it. So on our website, it's going to change all the time in the apps. There's a there's a GIF that runs through like 20 or 30 logos. So yeah, no. we're not going to actually own our own logo. It's going to be owned by the people because this is like what we it's were about. People. It's for the people, mm. right? I like that, man. I like that. It's a nice idea. I like that. And it gets people involved in it. Like you say, that's what this is about. And it's so yeah. internet, so read only, right? Like web yeah. two is so kind of like, don't touch, just, just read kind of thing. Like I'm, yeah, I'm not so, a part of it. so yeah, get in touch. Exactly, man. All right, cool. So we're at the end of the session for today. I want to give a huge thank you to everyone who's tuned in and listened today. I hope you've uh, learned something and we did talk about some pretty complex things. So um, yeah, you can unpack these at your own leisure. You know, there's some 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 deeper topics in here we spoke about. So, mm-hmm. just another thanks to you, Leon. Is there anything you want to finish with? Maybe just say thank yeah, you. Just to say thanks. Yeah, thanks to the listeners for sticking with us. Yeah, if you're still here, well done, well done you. guys. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, thanks to you, Ian, as well. It's been a real pleasure talking to you and just running through it all. It's been a real pleasure. I have a feeling we're going to talk again, my man. I think we're going yeah, to do this again in another six months or whenever. We like to catch yeah. up because things change so fast, right? Like absolutely, you could, we could yeah. be having a totally different conversation in six months. So yeah. it could be really cool. So, all righty. So thanks again, everybody. We'll be back. Uh, I'll be back next week with a whole bunch of new Fuse content. So you can keep it locked on Twitter there. Uh, also on Discord as well. You can find out all the updates there as well. So take care, everybody. Have a really cool day and a great weekend. And I'll see you all very soon. Thanks again, Leo. Thanks. Thanks.